Hello, my friends, and welcome back to GLB Productions. This is Bruno Luz here, and in this video, we're going to look at the Takamine TP4T preamp. This preamp is found on the entry level G series guitars, namely the 10 and 15 series. Now, being a G series preamp, it's important to note that guitars with this preamp are not compatible with the preamps found on the Japanese made Takamines, namely the CT4B2, CT4DX, and CoolTube preamps, all of which I have videos on. This particular guitar is a Taka Mini GX18CE-NS guitar, a review of which we'll post at about the same time as this video. Now, it has to be said that it's quite difficult sometimes to find specific information on Takamine products, not least their preamps. This particular preamp, there does not appear to be a manual anywhere on the Takamine website and no link to one. Fortunately, we live in the age of the internet and a quick Google search brought up this document, which as you can see is a owner's guide for the TP40 preamp. And if you own one of these preamps, I strongly suggest that you type TP40 Takamine preamp into your search box and you should be able to find this. To begin with, you have a battery compartment, an LCD readout for the tuner, three bands of EQ, and a gain knob. You also have a button there to activate the tuner and a low battery indicator. So let's begin with the battery compartment itself. Now, unlike the CT4B preamp, which this preamp superficially resembles, there is no battery tray, okay? You can see there's a tab at the top and bottom here. When you press these tabs in, the door comes off. Now, don't lose this door, okay? Because they'll probably want to sell you another guitar or something. So inside there, you can see we have a nine volt battery, okay? And the nine volt battery goes in with the positive terminal on the right, okay? It just sits there and then you put the door back on top and you press it in making sure that top and bottom tabs go in nicely. Uh, it's a very simple system, a good system. Uh, the only weak point being that this door strikes me as being quite easy to lose, especially if you set it down somewhere and then go looking for the battery. Um, next to that, you have a LCD display for the tuner. Now the tuner is one of the more mysterious features of this uh, preamp and, and you really do need the manual in order to work it out. Uh, according to that document that I found, pressing the tuner button once turns it on. It also briefly illuminates the low battery light there. If your battery is low, the manual says that the light will illuminate steadily. Now, as soon as you press this button, you can see one or two of these chevrons are flashing, okay? And they don't always flash, they only flash when there's an input to the internal pickup system. Plucking any string will give you a readout. Now, as you can see, this tuner uses an up and down arrow system and the tuner tells you which direction to tune in order to get your string in tune. So using the A string as an example, if we deliberately detune this, all right, and let's go flat. You can see that it's saying that I need to tune up in order to get my note in tune. So up we go, and the closer you are, the more it will, the, the more slowly it will flash. And eventually, it will give you the double arrow. Double arrow indicates in tune. Similarly, if we go sharp, right, it'll tell you that you got to tune down. As always, with all of these tuners, you want to go below and then bring the string back up to pitch. This ensures correct tension in the tuner gears. There 
There we go. And you know, the readout is chromatic, so it reads all strings. E, A, and so on and so forth. It's a fairly rapid and a fairly accurate tuner. Now, the other thing about this tuner that I had no idea about until I used it was the fact that it features a calibration function. According to the manual, when the tuner is active, pressing the tune button a second time allows you to tune to an arbitrary reference pitch. So what you do is you turn the tuner on, as you can see there we're on, all right? And then you tune one string of your instrument to match the other out of tune instrument that you have to play with. So let's say you are playing uh, with a piano and the piano is somewhat flat. So we would make sure the tuner is on, all right? And then we tune one string. So, right, so we're now flat there. And then you press the button a second time and you see that now we have the double arrow. So that's the calibration. So now this is in tune and everything else should register as sharp. Okay, you can see there. And, okay, the, this function I find Yes, yeah, working on those, right? But um, it's uh, a little bit hit and miss in my experience. Again, it is a useful feature to have. In order to turn the tuner off, you press and hold the button and it'll go off. As you can see there, we're now off. If you do not do anything, it turns off after a couple of minutes. So what I do is I generally, I turn it on I tune and then I forget about it and I let it turn itself off. When you turn the tuner back on, it will recalibrate to A440. So you can see that this now registers once again as flat. There we go. So in general, I find that this tuner is quite fast, quite accurate and easy to use. Just as important, it's nice and bright, so you can see it during the daytime, under stage lighting, and in just about any condition. Having this tuner on board, I personally find wonderful. It means I don't have to carry an external tuner, and it's always with me, and the batteries last pretty much forever. It's also worth noting that unlike on the CT4B2 preamp, there's no option to mute and tune. In other words, pressing the button a second time does not mute the output of the guitar, unlike on that other preamp. We've already covered the low battery light. Uh, when the low battery, when the battery is low enough such that your sound begins to deteriorate, this LED will turn on. Uh, Takamine does not publish any specifications on the battery life um, but given that it's a 9 volt battery, I would say you're looking at probably several hundred hours before you have to change it. So let's now look at the EQ. We'll press and hold this two seconds to turn off the tuner. The EQ, according to the legend here, says that you have plus minus 12 dB and you have bass, mid and treble. According to the manual, bass is set at 60 Hertz and contrary to what it says here, you have only plus minus 9 dB. Mid is set at 600 and again, contrary to what it says here, you only have plus minus 10 and treble is set at 10 kilohertz, and there you do have plus minus 12 dB. So as on my other Takamine preamp videos, I'm going to uh, demo the full range of this EQ. Uh, I'll play the guitar first flat, and then we'll go through the bands one at a time. Uh, it's worth noting on this that you see how this indicator line is at the center? The plus minus 12s are right at the end of the fader track. But do you see that even when I fully boost the fader, the indicator line never reaches the plus 12? So 
I don't quite know what that means. You know, do you do you read the reading from the end of the fader, or do you read it from the center? This is one of those cases where you really just have to use your ears because this is not really a, a good clear guide of how many dB you're boosting and cutting. Okay. So now let's hear how the preamp sounds. As I mentioned earlier, this particular preamp is in the Takamine Takamini guitar and the signal chain for this demo is as follows. From the guitar, I'm connected into a channel of my Mackie 802 VLZ4. The um, instrument or high impedance switch on the channel is on. High pass filter is off. Channel EQ is set flat. And from the mixer, the signal is fed directly into the video camera. Now let's hear the preamp with the bass boosted halfway. Now let's hear the preamp with the bass boosted all the way. Now let's hear the preamp with the bass cut about halfway. Now let's hear the preamp with the bass cut all the way. Now let's hear the preamp with the bass reset to flat and the mid-range boosted halfway. Now let's hear the preamp with the mid-range boosted all the way.
Now let's hear the preamp with the mid cut halfway. Now let's hear the preamp with the mid cut all the way. Now let's return the mid to flat and hear the preamp with the treble boosted halfway. Now let's hear the preamp with the treble boosted all the way. Now let's hear the preamp with the treble cut halfway. And finally, let's hear the preamp with the treble cut all the way. So that's the EQ section. Now, given that the EQ's effect will depend on the specific guitar on which this preamp is installed, I can't tell you exactly how to set your EQ. For this particular instrument, I find the best setting is with the bass boosted slightly and the mid-range cut about halfway. I generally leave the treble alone because I find that boosting the treble makes it sound harsh and cutting the treble makes it sound muddy, so I just leave it in the middle. So let's hear the preamp with it set this way.
The final feature of the preamp is this large gain control or volume control depending on how you look at it. As you can see it has a minimum and a maximum position. I personally start with it center and this allows me some control over my sound on stage. If I want louder I'll just go clockwise and anti-clockwise gives me a softer. So that's my review and user guide of the Takamine TP4T preamp. It is a entry level preamp in the G series guitars, but as you can see, it's still relatively user friendly. It has a good, accurate and fast tuner. And it also gives you options in terms of EQ and volume. The one thing about this preamp that I really don't like is the way in which the EQ faders feel. They really feel quite uh, cheap and not precise. It takes quite a lot of force to move them. And I, I feel that they lack uh, the resolution that is present on the CT4B2 preamp, which is the equivalent on the Japanese produced guitars. Having said that, the advantage of the faders being stiff is that they do stay where you leave them and as we all know once we settle on a particular EQ for a guitar um, it tends to stay there. Apart from that it's a good preamp. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Thanks very much for watching. Do please feel free to get in touch either in the comment section below on Google Plus or on Facebook. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.